Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about software defined networking. So before going into the details, let's give, uh, let's uh, read the basic definitions, uh, the very broad definition of software defined networking. So this is that, that software defined networking is an approach which enables the use of program or software to manage the network or networking functions. So we use software to manage the network and the software defined networking actually tries to centralize the traditional decentralized network. So these def definitions are really broad and now to understand these definitions let's uh, go into a bit details. So for better understandings let's suppose that we have a simple network here. And some of the user, which is on the left hand side here, this user, for example, this user wants to send some data to the user on the right hand side. So this user generates data. That's basically a frame. And then this frame is sent to the switch. And if this packet is supposed to go to the host on the same network, then this switch will just forward it. And for that, the switch has to look into its MAC table entry and if it's not there then it can use the address resolution protocol or ARP. So we are familiar with these basic protocols. Okay, but if this packet has to go to some of the destination which is not directly connected then this will be forwarded to a default gateway router. So this is the default gateway and this packet will be sent to the router. Now the router will receive that frame and it will de-encapsulate the frame and it will look into the header part and there will be some IP addresses and it will consult its routing table and its routing table, let's move it. In its routing table, it will see that where this packet is supposed to go. For example, this is the destination. Then it will look at what uh, or which interface I should use to forward this packet and what will be the next hop for that. So it means by looking at the routing table, it can forward. So it will again uh, encapsulate the packet and it, it will forward to the next hop. So for example, this is the destination and this will forward to the next hop. So using the information in this routing table. Now the next hop is this router. So this router will receive that frame. It will de-encapsulate and it will consult again its own routing table and it will find out that where I need to send this packet so that it should be reached at the required destination. So it will just again uh, will encapsulate the packet and it will forward to the next hop using the information which is in the routing table. Now the final router will also will look, will uh, de-encapsulate and will look into the routing table and Using that information, it will forward the packet to the ultimate destination. So we just saw that in this simple example, these networking devices are going to perform different functions. And we only focused on the de-encapsulation and the encapsulation part of the packets. But in addition to that function, these router may be configured with some ACL or access control list. So in that case, routers also have to make decision that whether to forward that packet or just to discard that packet. And if there is some VPN there, then they also have to go through some encryption. And if there is some net or network address translation uh, configuration on the routers, then they also have to do this thing as well. So these are the functions which are performed by the router or the network, uh, these networking devices. So for example, at this case, at the switch, they have to look at the MAC table entries. So this is also one of the functions. Now these all are the functions when these networking devices have to perform when they are supposed to forward some data packets. So this is this is the job or these are the functions to forward the data packet. So we categorize or we classify these all functions as the forwarding functions and we say these are the forwarding plane functions and they are actually forwarding the data so we call this is the uh, functions related with the data plane so we classify so we just say this is the data plane function so all the functions of forwarding 
the message data these are message or data they are or they all are grouped as data plane with the same functions all of them now you see for doing these all functions the routers for example they were using the uh, routing table and in this switch for example they were maintaining some mac tables so it means when there's some data is coming to this with this router the router already has some support with them by which they are forwarding this so it means these devices for example in the case of routers these routers actually need the ip addresses for them they also need the routers uh, they so they need to have the routing table and in the case of switches they need to have mac table and uh, they also uh, needs to be configured with maybe STP to avoid loop spanning tree protocol. It means these are the functions which router needs to have in them to uh, are they need to be configured with these things to forward the data from one point to another like this one. Now these all are supporting functions which are going to control the operation of these networking devices. So these all functions are classified as control plan so the functions helping in forwarding the message or data they all are grouped as control plan now it means these all devices so it means these all devices are going to perform two kinds of function one is uh, like forwarding the data so that is data plan and the control plan so all device this one also have this same data and control plan, this get data and control plan, and this device also has and else as well as like these switches. So they all have the data plan and control plan. So on the control plan, for example, they exchange the control plan information. For example, they can exchange the information about routing protocol, for example, OSPF. They exchange the routing information with each other. And for that, they use this control plan. And on the basis of the information received, so OSPF will actually fill up the routing table and that routing table will help this data plan to forward the data from one point to another. So this, from this information, now data plan is forwarding the data from one point to another. Now, in addition to this data plan and control plan, we also have a third plan that is known as management plan and that manage plan plan is used to manage the devices for example we can access these uh, these networking devices using telnet or, or secure shell or snp or syslog so by these protocols we can actually manage these devices so we have these three plans in every networking device now you see every device has this control plan and data plan so control plan functions are basically handled by each device individually so every device is doing are performing its control functions individually so we call them distributed control plan so control plan is distributed among all the networking devices and this is also known as traditional architecture now in software defined networking what happens we want to uh, we want these control functions to be moved to a central location so what happens these control functions are or the control plan functions are moved to a central location so you can see all the functions are taken from those devices and they are placed in some con in some central location and we call that central location as a controller or specifically SDN controller. So we can say SDN or software defined networking controller. That means now these functions are supposed to be performed by some central entity and this central entity is going to centralize the control of networking devices. And this controller is basically a software and that software can be run on a virtual machine or some specific physical device. So now this is software running somewhere in a central this can be actually can say this can be somewhere in the cloud as well 
Now, this controller, actually this controller is, is a software, so we can actually program it. So we can program this controller to control the network operation. Now, if we can control or we can program this controller, then after programming this controller, this controller needs to convey that information back to these devices. So it means there should be some mechanism that this controller should be able to communicate with these, these devices, these networking devices back. So for that, we have an interface that is known as southbound interface and this southbound interface is there uh, to help the controller to interact with the networking devices. So by using this southbound interface, every networking device is, can actually exchange the information with the controller. Now, for example, every, every device actually maintains a flow tables and these flow tables are basically managed by the controller and controller sends this information by using this southbound interface. An example for this is like the southbound interface uses open flow protocol and this open flow protocol is an open source protocol and that is given by Open Networking Foundation. Now we are done with the interaction with the devices, but now this software is basically supposed to uh, be handled by some network administrator. So for example, there are some users who can program it. And for that, they can use maybe some specific app or they can use maybe Python programming. So it means this controller should also have an interface to interact with these entities. And for that, this controller has a southbound interface and the users are the programs. They interact with the controller using this, sorry, not southbound, this is northbound. So this by using this northbound interface. Our or they, they use some API application programming interfaces. Now this application programming interface is a method that's extensively used in programming. So there is a, this is a method by which applications exchange data with each other. Now these apps are software, these are also software. So now how to exchange this information for that these APIs are extensively used in programming. So same API concept is used here. Now we have the northbound interface by which these programmers or these network administrator can actually control or can program this controller using northbound interface. So we have moved all the functions, all the control plane functions from individual devices to the central entity that is controller and the controller has the southbound interface and northbound interfaces. And for the northbound interfaces, for example, there are some specific uh, APIs like REST. So REST is sent for representational state transfer. And we can also use some Java API. So this discussion is really broad, but these are some examples by which these application programs our user can interact with the controller to handle it. So now we have all the discussions of how to make this network uh, or how to convert this decentralized network to a centralized one and how this can be converted into some other control pen function can be uh, taken out of from the devices to the central entity and how can we use programming languages or some programs to manage the network so now the same lines that this is an app route which enables the use of software to manage the networking functions and then it tries to uh, centralize the network from decentralized one so it means these control functions which were basically decentralized every router or every switch was performing this job individually now those control functions have been somehow centralized now this centralized, sometimes this is 100% centralized, sometimes this is not like maybe up to what percentage this centralized um, has been done 
in some specific controller that is some some topic for the future but at the moment for understanding let's suppose that this is this control function or this control is going to perform all the control plan functions so we'll discuss about some variations in this controller or how these different companies are going to implement this controller for example how the cisco is going to implement this uh, controller we'll discuss in some other future video but for today's uh, discussion this is the end and uh, thank you thank you very much for your time and i hope this discussion was a bit helpful for you and i hope to see you in some other video thank you